Today we're going to talk about exceptions. Exceptions are a way that we can tell the programmer that something is wrong. So remember, we're not just programming so that we can interact with the user. We're also programming like classes and things like that so that somebody else can take our code and use it in their own program. For example, pandas, scipy, numpy, that sort of stuff are all libraries that somebody else already wrote for us. And we want to be able to do that. That way there, we can provide code to our colleagues and say, listen, we've already solved this issue. We've already solved it the best way possible. Use our code and then go from there. However, not everything goes well. There's always something that can be wrong, that sort of stuff. So let me show you exactly what I mean by things can go wrong. So in a normal Python program, we could say a whatever. So this is an empty list and a is the empty list, but let's say we print a sub zero. So if you remember, a sub zero is trying to print the very first element of the list. However, there are no elements in the list. So what's going to happen? Well, number one, the print obviously cannot function because there is no element called a sub zero. So let's see what happens when we try this. Of course, it takes a little while. There you go. Notice we get an exception has occurred index error. So this is exactly what we were talking about when we talk about exceptions. Something just didn't go right. So let's take a look at the different things that we could do with the exception. So we're gonna handle generic exceptions. Just say, okay, something happened, let's do something about it. And then we can get more specific. Let's say, in this case, we have the index error. Hey, an index error occurred, so let's see if we can handle that differently than if some other problem. So we can have multiple problems, obviously, and then it's uh, incumbent upon us to determine what are we going to do about it. So your code essentially is gonna say, hey, listen, there's a problem, I don't know how to deal with it, and what you would do is you'd throw me an exception. Be able to raise exceptions when the situations require. So not only are we going to listen and find exceptions and handle exceptions, we're actually gonna cause exceptions. We're gonna check the bounds of some sort of parameter or something like that and say, listen, I can't deal with this. There's nothing I can do about this. Let's get an exception. And then you'll be able to create your own exception. So the cool thing about Python is an exception is just a class. And so if we can define a class, we're gonna inherit what's called inherit the exception class and then we'll make our own and it'll be an exception and we'll see exactly how we do that and so exceptions typically how we used to do this is you would return what's called an error code and so what you would do is you would call a function just make a function call that sort of stuff and you listen to whatever it returns back to you typically and this gets kind of weird but it would return zero on success and non-zero if it was a failure and then the non-zero value would be what's called an error code so you'd have to go over to a table look it up in the error code and see what caused it and so Handling errors has gotten a lot better since then. So in Python, we could actually throw what's called throw an error and say, listen, something happened. So let's take a look at what that actually means. So let's get rid of this. So in this case, we are going to cause an exception, but we have what's called a try block. It's say, okay, Python, try to run this code. If something happens, then we can handle it. So a try block looks like this. And just like always, it's indented. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to print a sub zero. And we're going to do what's called accept. Now accept over here says, hey, if anything went wrong, then run this body of code. So it's an either or. So the try block is going to run. As soon as an exception is thrown from any of that, it's going to go to the exception block, the accept block here, and run whatever this code is. I have an error. There we go. So let's try this out. And what's going to happen is we're going to create an empty list. We're going to enter the try block and we're going to try to print off a sub zero, which doesn't exist. We're going to catch an exception by using the accept keyword and we're going to print I have an error. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Notice down here it says I have an error. So let's see what would happen if there wasn't an error. Say there is an A sub zero, one, two, three, something like that. Okay. So now we're going to enter the try block. We're going to print out a sub zero, which is the value one. And then this exception block, since no exception actually occurred, we're going to skip the exception block and run down here. So let's say dot here. Okay. So that should run regardless of whether we have an exception or not. So let's go ahead and test this code. See what happens. Notice we get one, which is the value of a sub zero. And then it print got here. So once again, let's take this out and just see what got here did. So once again, if we have the exception, we hit the try block because we didn't have an exception at this case because a sub zero was there, it was the value one, we got the value one got here. So that's exactly what we were expecting. Now we're going to force an exception because a sub zero doesn't exist. Let's see what happens now. Notice it says I have an error got here. So instead of running this print command, it threw an exception so it didn't run that print command and then went down here and ran this print command. And so 
Because this is indented on the exception, anytime we get an exception, that's the code that's going to run. And we can have as many lines of code as we want. Because this is outside of the exception, this runs regardless. So once again, if we this is what's called handling an exception. If we don't handle an exception, let's take a look at what happens. So now it's not within a try block, and so the exception is not being handled. So let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, so notice we get this big long list index out of range, all that sort of stuff. So this is what's called an unhandled exception. It actually crashes our program. And notice that got here never even got printed. And so our program actually stalled out on line four here because Python's like, what do you want me to do about this? Something happened. I don't know what you want me to do about it. So I'm just gonna quit. And that's exactly what Python did in this case. So that's how exceptions essentially are going to work. Now we can get down to a specific exception, notice that this is called index error. So that's the exception that we were catching in this case. So let's try this again. Let's put this inside of a try block, but except this time I'm going to catch just an index error. Okay, notice that I can specify the specific error that I'm looking for by saying except index error. And then what I can do is I can make a catch all outside here. Something, this is the dreaded fatal error. Something went wrong, okay? Unhandled exception, I don't know, unspecified error. You'll probably get those in Windows, that sort of stuff. But this is the unhandled exception. We don't know, Some, it's the catch-all. Something went wrong, we try to figure out what went wrong by index error, but if it wasn't an index error, then something went wrong. So let's take a look at what this is going to do. So we know we're gonna get an index error from A sub zero. When we run the code, we say index out of the range got here. So index out of range gets printed on line seven, so that means we did catch index error. Okay, so let's try this. Let's do something completely like uh, apples plus zero, one, I don't know, 10 or something like that, who knows. So I'm trying to add a string to an integer. Let's see what happens here. Okay, notice we get something went wrong. The reason is because adding a string to an integer is a type error and it's not an index error. So let's see, we got something went wrong because that's the catch all. Let's see what happens when we add type error. run this code and we get there was a type error. So you can see we can have multiple exception blocks. We can specify multiple things, but at the very end, if you want a catch-all, you have to have accept and then nothing after the accept. And that'll be your catch-all. If I don't have a catch-all like this, um, let's just get rid of the type error. So here I don't have a type error. So apples plus 10. So we're catching an index error. But notice that this will throw a type error, which is not the one that we're listening for. So whenever I run this code, we're gonna get that big long Python error, okay? Because that's an unhandled exception. And down here it tells us type error can only concatenate string, not integers to a string. And so as you can see, we can specify what we wanna listen for. If we don't specify what we wanna listen for, or we don't specify the catch-all, then Python just says, it throws up its hands and says, I don't know what you want me to do. And we get this big long error that looks like this. So that's how we actually can catch specific errors. Now, in our functions, Let's say we have a divide me function. We'll have our numerator and we'll have our denominator, okay? But we wanna make sure that whenever you give us the denominator, it's not going to be zero. So if the denominator is equal to zero, we're going to do what's called raise a type error, okay? I'm gonna specify your denominator was zero, okay? Otherwise, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return numerator divided by denominator, okay? So in this case, what is going to happen is anytime I raise an exception, it actually breaks out of the function, okay? Because it's not in a try block, the raise is just gonna say, listen, something went wrong in this. So notice I actually don't need this else statement right here because it's gonna quit the function right at the raise statement, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. Sorry, that's not what I wanted, there we go. And let's say results equals divide me Let's go 10 divided by zero and see what happens. So we run the code and we say, got a type error. Okay, well let's try this without the try block and see exactly what's going on. See if it's us doing the try or the, the divide error, that sort of stuff. So now let's get rid of it and notice it says, hey, Type error, your denominator was zero. Well, where did that come from? Hey, look at this. If we compare that the denominator was zero, we've raised a type error, 
and said your denominator was zero. So notice that our result is now, it, it doesn't do us any good because we don't need the result of the case because we just raised a type error and I've got to sneeze. Okay, so now that we've divided by zero, let's go ahead and put our try block back in there and see if we can figure out what we can do here. Got to spell it right, there we go. Okay, so in this case, we have what's going to cause the exception on line 11, and then some additional code that we want to run that won't cause an error on line 12. But as you'll see, if we have an error inside the try block, it jumps out of the try block, runs the exception. So what's the print result going to do? Nothing, because it won't even get there. So let's take a look at what happens. We run this, we say got a type error, got here. So the only two things that printed were this and this. This never got printed. So now let's put in two. 10 divided by 2, we should get the value 5. So let's take a look at what happens now that we're not going to catch a type error. Notice it prints 5.0, got here. So what happens is this result equals divide me jumps into here. The denominator is not 0, so we run the else, and we divide 10 divided by 2, and we print out 5.0. And so that's how we can actually raise a, a, an exception. Let's go back to our lecture real quick, and then what we're going to do is we can raise exceptions. So we've handled these three right here. We have the generic exception, that's your catch-all, where it's just accept without any kind of parameter after that. You can handle specific exceptions where you say accept and then some sort of uh, type error or index error, that sort of stuff. You do have to know what the error is going to be. So a lot of times you have to look in the Python documentation, or you can just not catch the exception and let Python tell you, here's what happened and then you can modify your code to actually catch that type error or whatever kind of error it's going to be. But it is incumbent upon you to know what type of error that you're going to be listening for. So the last thing we need to do is be able to create our own exceptions. And so if we scroll down here, we can see to create our own exceptions, we inherit what's called the exception class and it has to be spelled and capitalized uh, this way. So notice we have def in it. So if you remember that from classes, that's your constructor. And what's going to happen is notice that in the type error, I specified a parameter, which was we get to give a little bit of more information to say, here's what caused it. That way there, it's not just unspecified error or something like that. So in this case, we can create our new exception by saying class my exception. And remember it is capital exception def in it self and then what caused it self dot what caused it is equal to what and so what that's going to do is notice right here on this type error, I specified what caused it okay now the second portion that I had here is def string okay remember anything that's underscore underscore words underscore underscore is special to Python in here what it's going to try to do is whenever we get the exception it's going to try to print it out as a string and so this is how we can convert it into a string so if I do def str self, I can return self.what, and that's how we can essentially turn it into a string. So now instead of raising a type error, I'm going to raise a my exception. So what's going to happen here is this creates a brand new class, just like we've done before, and it's going to pass your denominator with zero into this parameter what. We're going to save the parameter what into the self, that way there it actually belongs to the class itself, and then whenever we try to raise it, Whenever Python tries to get whatever the name is, it can convert it into a string by using this function here. If we didn't have this function here, Python would actually throw another error that says, hey, I have no idea how to print out what caused this, okay? So now we're printing this out. We're going to still catch the type error and not catch the my exception. And you'll see why here, because we want Python to actually print out what's causing it just to make sure everything is going to work here. So let's go ahead and run this. Notice we get 5.0 got here. That was my mistake because I meant for this to actually cause an error, but there you go. Let's do 10 divided by zero. Now we should get the exception. There we go. So now notice we get my exception, your denominator was zero. So it tells you exactly line 11, which is right here. It raised my exception, your denominator was zero. So whenever I do return self what, this is exactly what's printing out right here. And so Python will print out the name of your class, colon, and then get the string version of whatever you told it. So let's instead of say self what, say something went awry. There we go. So let's take a look at what this is going to do now. So now we're not always printing your denominator was zero. Even though the user passes that in as the what parameter, just to show you that this is actually causing something to happen, notice what Python does, something went awry. So once again, it's trying to convert your exception into a string. It will call this function, whatever you return in string format is going to be whatever Python's going to print out. So let's go ahead and 
convert this back to self.what. And now let's accept on my exception. Okay, so what I can do here is we can say we got a my exception error. And so now we can catch our own errors. And notice it says got a my exception error. Excellent. Okay, and so in this case, we can catch my exception and we can tell, we can throw our own exceptions to say, here's what caused it. So I can create exceptions after exceptions after exceptions and say, this is what caused it, this is what caused it, this is what caused it. And obviously that's going to be sort of a give or take based on the complexity of the function that you're writing. So going back to this, we can see we are able to handle generic exceptions. We're able to handle specific exceptions, raise exceptions, and then create our own exceptions. There's one last thing that we want to do, and it's the as keyword and me, that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is, what we're doing is we're actually capturing the class. And when I run this, you'll notice what happens is your denominator with zero is actually going to be printed out. So this as me, if we don't add this, we don't actually capture the exception itself. We know there's an exception, but we don't know the actual object that's being passed. So recall, whenever we create a class like this, we are generating a new object. It means it takes up memory. If I left off this as me, there's no way to actually look at what that memory is. If we put the as me, ME stands for my exception. As me, we could actually grab whatever that was. And so whenever I do me over here, I could do me dot what, but guess what? Python's going to try to convert this into a string. It's going to return self dot what, and that's exactly why we got, got a my exception error, your denominator was zero. So why is this special? Well, what I can do is I can actually add an error code over here, say 10 or something like that. I can raise the exception here. And now inside of the exception, we can actually have our own if me dot, well, I gotta save it somewhere. There we go. And so we can say if me dot code equals 10, it means that it's a denominator problem. So as you can see with your exceptions, we can create multiple exceptions. However, one exception can do a lot, it's pretty powerful. We can do a lot of different things with just one exception and we can give ourselves a code just like we did here. And that allows us to compartmentalize what your code is doing versus what our code is doing. And exceptions are essentially the way to go. Uh, the old returning an error code is, you don't really do that that much. I think some of your labs actually have you return an error code, that sort of stuff, but that's essentially what an exception is. So just make sure we didn't miss anything. Let's go back over this. We were able to handle generic exceptions by using the try block followed by an accept. If the accept does not have anything after it, it's the catch all, it's gonna catch any kind of exception that you have. Be able to handle specific exceptions. That's essentially what we've done here. We can say accept, we can put a name after that and we say we want to handle just my exceptions. Anything else? We can actually specify multiple accept blocks to handle more specific or more generic exceptions. Be able to raise exceptions when the situation requires. Here we go with our raise right here. It's just an if statement. We're just checking whatever the user gave us to make sure that it's 100% we can do something with it. We can't divide by zero, so we say, hey, let's check to see if the denominator is zero. And finally, be able to create your own exceptions. The only really important thing to know here is that we create our class by putting our name first followed by parentheses, followed by capital exception. If we don't put the capital exception, it's not going to be, it's not going to be accurate, it's not going to be correct. And then we typically use a constructor, that way there, whenever we raise, we raise the, the constructor. That way there, we construct and raise all at the same time. We don't have to construct a new class, then raise that object of that class. And once again, this string right here, so that Python can actually convert our exception into a string and print out exactly what occurred. And those are exceptions in a nutshell. So exceptions, once again, are a way that we can return data that says, hey, something went wrong. Exceptions means it's an exception to the rule. Hence, something went wrong. And you'll be using these, catching these, creating these, that sort of stuff. Because once again, you need to get out of the mindset that I'm just going to interact with the user, that sort of thing. You are now going to be starting to write your own libraries like NumPy, that sort of stuff. And then have somebody else use it because you've already solved the issue. So if you've already solved the problem, why write the code over and over again? Solve the problem, make your code the best it can be, and then have everybody use that code. Use exceptions, that sort of stuff, just to tell people, hey, something went wrong, and that is good programming practices. So that is how you do exceptions. Thanks for watching.